Hey there everybody, it's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another video. Today we're going to be having a look back at the very first comic book uh, project that I attempted. This is when I was still a kid, um, around 11 or 12 years old, I suppose. And uh, I had invented this superhero called Metal Ring. And I even went so far as to have it printed up and I put a price on it, 40 cents, I wanted people to pay uh, for the privilege of reading this story. And I thought I'd just take you through the whole thing uh, just for fun. Um, and, you know, get a sense of where I came from, I suppose, uh, as a comic book creator. So here's the bad guy saying, Ha ha! Now I can commit crimes without Metal Ring bothering me! <clears throat> Wonderful writing here. <laughs> I think you'll agree. <laughs> and then down here in the box. Who is this hooded villain? Find out by reading Metal Ring versus The Whirlwind, page 3. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to page three. And uh, the first thing that I decided to do was give you the origin story of Metal Ring. Hopefully I can read all this, because some of, some of it is not too clear. But it says, The Origin of Metal Ring. Mike Riley, Mark Crilly, Mike Riley? Hmm, interesting. Mike Riley was the assistant of a very uh, smart scientist. Very smart. One day... Mike Riley modeled a spacesuit as the scientist taught a lesson. So we have the establishing shot. Not bad. I'm starting to figure out the nuts and bolts of comics. <laughs> of course, I have to put the credit in here. Created and drawn by Mark Crilly. Suddenly, a criminal runs into the room with a stolen ray gun and shoots the scientist. Hands up, everyone, or you'll get this. Z -z Zap! No! Uh. No! Oh, wait a minute. i got to refocus the camera. No! <laughs> so, that's... <laughs> I can't help laughing that I did the classic no thing even back then. I said, hands up, kid! And I got the arrows to tell you which panel to look at next. <laughs> I think you know what happens next. It's almost like the effect of a radioactive spider. That ray gun. At this moment, three things happened. Mike's skin was hardened so that nothing could puncture it. The materials which made up his helmet were changed, and Mike was given a power of levitation over his helmet. I think that's what I meant to write there. So, boy, a lot of information crammed into this one. Forgive me if I critique my own work here. Uh, I don't mean to say that I should have been better at the age of 11 or 12, Far from it. I think it's, you know, impressive enough that I actually finished a, a complete story here. So here we go. Next panel. As he stumbles home through an alley, he wished that his helmet would come off. Lucky for me, I was <coughs> hit in, the, in my helmet. Otherwise, I'd have died like the scientist. <laughs> Need to work on my grammar there. I read this in the wrong order, I'm sorry. As he stumbles homeward through an alley, he wished that his helmet would come off. Suddenly, Mike discovered that he had total control over this helmet. The metal in the helmet did not exist anywhere else on Earth. He bought the scientist's laboratory. He must have had a lot of money, huh? He bought the lion scientist's laboratory and turned his helmet into... ta -da! what we see today on his uniform. So this is sort of interesting to me that I did start with this idea of a helmet and then I had him turn the helmet into other materials. I might have got that from the Superman story because he had, they, I think they said that he had like blankets with him in his little childhood baby rocket or something and then he turned the blankets into his suit. Could have been an inspiration. He made himself a suit and named himself Metal Ring, Fighter of Crime, Defender of Justice. <laughs> the end. So there's your origin story. Could have used a little work on the anatomy there. But um, not bad, not bad. We at least got the story going, and now we can move on to his first adventure. Metal Ring versus the Whirlwind. So, of course, you got to, uh, every superhero needs a good supervillain. And we'll find out if I manage to create a good supervillain with the whirlwind. Stop, you crook! 
One day, as Mike Riley waits for his bus, I love that he's still waiting for a bus, <laughs> even though he's a superhero. He's a humble guy. Uh, still got the credit here. Created and drawn by Mark Crilly. Uh-oh, I smell trouble. And that means Metal Ring does, too. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I got to laugh at the writing. But it is sort of interesting to get the extreme close-up in the foreground and uh, this guy uh, having fallen down. I, th I think I'm starting to take it a little more seriously, starting to learn some of the tricks of the trade. Somewhere in an empty alley, Mike Riley sheds his clothing to reveal that he is actually Metal Ring. dun dun dun, dun. And he goes flying off. I'm sort of impressed that I bothered with drawing the drop shadow there. And uh, <clears throat> trying to get a detailed background, as you guys know, that eventually became a kind of obsession of mine, uh, doing detailed backgrounds. But let's continue with our thrilling adventure. Excuse me, I've got a little bit of a cold today, so sorry if my voice sounds weird. After a long chase, so there's his hideout. He still doesn't know I've followed him. <laughs> How's that for exposition? He still doesn't know I've followed him. Hey, you sure pulled off a good job tonight, boss. City Bank. And <laughs> it's funny, but I got this is the bad guy, the whirlwind, and he apparently has one <laughs> cohort. <laughs> one thug that works for him. Maybe he's saving up money to get more thugs to work on his behalf. <clears throat> so anyway, you pulled off a good job tonight, boss. Good, but not perfect. Why you? I'll, I'll tear you apart. <laughs> I love how he, he hesitates over the word "I'll." I, I'm trying to think about what it is I'll do to you. I'll, I'll tear you apart. Uh, again, we've got the sort of foreground, background kind of thing going on there, which uh, <clears throat> it's interesting to me that I, I'm, I'm starting to try to get some sense of depth, I suppose, within each panel. <laughs> Not so fast, mister. Whew. So these rings that are on his wrists, I guess, can fly off. He controls them by telepathy. The ring is mentally hurtled across the room. Whack! Oh! Again with the drop shadows. So clearly, I was very focused on getting the drop shadows in there. And next panel. You're not getting away that easy. Metal ring dives towards his legs. Rip! Oh. Ha, 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 ha. So I think this was... Oh, I'm sorry. I should have shown what happened there. He dives towards his legs and then... Rip! Oh. Ha, ha, ha. Holding the city bank bag of loot. So I think what I was trying to show was that this guy has no legs, right? And uh, a metal ring attempted to tackle him by way of grabbing his legs, but he just flies right through it. Um... <coughs> Interestingly, one thing that I would change today if I were doing this sequence, now I've established that he's heading in this direction. It's a little jarring to have him fly in this direction in the next panel. That's one thing that I definitely would do differently now, among many other things. Let's continue. A little later, I don't know who he is, but we must get rid of him. And I, the whirlwind, am the only one who can do it. <laughs> Sounds like he's monologuing to me. Note, the whirlwind was strangely deformed by a disastrous scientific experiment. It's always a scientific experiment, isn't it? So, in a, we get his whole origin story in just a little note to the reader. Maybe not my finest hour as a writer, guys. Here we go. Quick, tie him up. He's waking. <laughs> he's waking. This guy is heavy. Of course, he's carrying him with one arm. <laughs> Doesn't look that heavy to me. This guy is heavy. <laughs> Maybe I should try carrying him with two arms. Okay. Many hours passed, and the whirlwind and his helper, <laughs> his one helper, finished off the first steps of their devious plan. Interestingly, I've got his arm hanging outside of the panel. <laughs> already defying the logic of comic book uh, panel rules. And now, on to the next panel. The gun is perfected. Now this meddler will have no legs like I do. And after the blast, I will have the lower part of my body back. Not sure how that works, but just roll with me here, people. Ready. Aim. Will Metal Ring be killed? Turn the page. <laughs> Ah. 
What a writer I was. Fire! Boom! Note, the ray was shot through the door of the closet because it only works in the dark. <laughs> so many of these little notes to <laughs> explain the story inconsistencies, I suppose, as I encountered them. He's not there! Where is he? What happened? Dun, dun, dun! Suddenly, crash! Good night, whirlwind! Wham! Ugh! He kicks with both feet. He gets both of his bad guys, one foot and <laughs> per, per villain. Ugh! How is this possible? How could my plan have been foiled? When your friend tied me up, I like how he's, I've got the uh, uh, quotation marks. When your friend tied me up, I was too tired to fight. So I told my rings to stick to my sides. Rings. Rope. I told my rings to stick to my side. When I told them to come out, the ropes slipped off. I climbed out the window for a surprise attack. Interesting that this requires the thug to not notice that he's tying the rope around <laughs> a couple of rings on either side of his abdomen. He's not a very attentive thug. <laughs> Let's face it. Not too long later, at the jail, it looks like the whirlwind is now the whirlwimp. The end. So there you go. There's my first completed story. And yeah, I hope you don't mind me sort of laughing at my own work as I went through it. Uh, I certainly do not mean to mock uh, the previous me. I was doing the best I could, and uh, indeed, if, if you're able to do anything like this uh, at the age of 11 or 12, I'd say um, your future is bright, and uh, even if you're not at this level uh, by the age of 15 or 16 or 20, it's never too late. It is never too late uh, if you practice hard enough and really throw yourself into it. You can make incredible progress. But before I end the video, I just want to quickly say thank you to anyone who has supported me by getting any of my books. Can you believe a guy who made a story like that was able to go on to do published books like this one, Brody's Ghost. Not so sure this is still in print these days. Hopefully uh, Dark Horse is sending that back to the printer. The Drawing Lesson, this one definitely still available. My graphic novel uh, that teaches you how to draw. And my very latest book, The Two pencil method. I really cannot say thank you often enough, uh, <clears throat> or more heartfeltedly enough, uh, to all of you who have supported me by getting my books. It really does mean a lot. But for now, I think it's time for me to wind down this video. I want to thank you all for watching it. I really hope you enjoyed it, and I'll be back with another one real soon.